Hello, welcome back to my channel. Happy learning mathematics. So today children we will be learning your 22nd lesson which is data collection and representation. So in order to explain that to give you an introduction about it, I want to explain an uh, incident for you. Now let's say your class teacher is asking about a child's attendance details. So she is asking you that how many days does this particular child get absent in the month of January. So can you just remember and tell the answer? No, right? So what will you get first? Where will you get the information required uh, about this attendance details? So I know now you will be thinking about the registers. Am I right? Yes. So register is one of the data collection method. So when you get the register, you can collect all the information about the attendance details. Am I right? So what do they mark? How do they mark the pre present and the absentee's information? They put a line to pre represent the present. Uh, and if they get absent, they put a zero. Am I right? So it's the method, easiest method to represent the data in this way rather than writing all the names in a uh, paper and uh, marking one by one so register is the easiest way to represent this data so likewise we are going to learn two of such uh, data collection methods so the first one will be the tally mark method and the second one is your picture graph so let's look at so in order to explain the data collection method, I am going to do an activity with you all now. So what I have here is, can you see a packet full of colored sticks? Okay, so the, there are uh, several colors in here. So I didn't count them. So I am going to count each color sticks now by uh, collecting the information in here. So I'm going to take each stick out of the bag and I'm going to uh, represent the data about this number of sticks. Okay, so shall we do that? Okay, so first I'm going to take a colored stick which is red. So there is a red color stick and there is one in it. I have taken out one. So the second I'm taking another one randomly which is yellow. Okay, so there are, first I'll write all the colors in here. As you can see, we have a green, orange, blue, uh, and that's it, right? Green, blue, and then orange. So, I'm going to take each sticks one by one out from this bag, and I'm going to uh, count the total number uh, of sticks in each color. So is it possible children to remember the numbers when you get each stick out from this bag? No, right? It's difficult to remember. So that's why we use tally marks. Okay, so you might have already learned this in grade 5. But anyway, I want that, I, I want you all to uh, remember that again in order to do the lesson. So tally marks actually what? When you take each stick out from this bag, you have to put a line like this. That means now this represents two sticks has been taken. Okay. Likewise, when you move on, now we used to mark the fifth one by cutting across the four lines. So this one set denotes that there have been five sticks taken out from the bag. Do you understand? One, two, three, four and the fifth is cut across those four lines. So I'm going to count each sticks and represent it. So now due to the limited time, now I have counted all the sticks, number of sticks in each color. So as you can see, this column represents the number of sticks in each color. We have 23 red ones, 12 yellow color sticks, 18 green color sticks, 
26 blue ones and at last 16 orange colored sticks. Now let's look at the way to represent this data. As I mentioned before, what do we do? One set of tally mark represent 5. Am I right? So since there are 23, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 20, 1, 2, 3. Do you understand? So this represents 23. The next one is 12. So how do we mark that? 5, 10, 11 and 12. Do you understand? Next one is 18, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17 and 18. Let's move on to the next one which is 26, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and 26. The last one is 16 so 5, 10, 15 and one more. Which is gives us 60. So now do you understand how to represent the data with the use of tally marks. Okay, so this is easy to count as well. Am I right? Rather than putting the lines only, if you cut across like this, it's easy to count for you all to in 5, set of 5. So you can easily count 5, 10, 15, 20 and then 3 more, so 23. So this is what tally marks is about. So now you will be able to do a few questions from your textbooks regarding this tally marks. So let's move on to the second method. So now we are going to look at the way to represent the same data in a picture graph. So in the picture graph you should consider two important things. First thing is you must choose a proper symbol to denote this relevant data. Okay. So you can use any kind of symbol in your textbook. They have used several kinds of symbol. You can go through them and check. So here I am going to use a circle. Okay. And the second thing is you should indicate the amount of data represented by this symbol. That means you cannot simply draw 23 circles in here. So that's very difficult to do, right? Not enough space and when you get the information also, it is difficult to count the circles like that. So you can indicate like this by one circle indicates four colored sticks. So one circle denotes four sticks. So you should indicate this either on top or bottom of the table, okay? This is compulsory. Okay. So now I am going to draw according to this only. So as I am going to denote one circle with four number of states. Look at the uh, collected data in here. So here the numbers are not only the multiples of four. Am I right? There are some other numbers as well as 23, 18, 26. They are not multiples of 4. But since one circle denotes 4 sticks, how much does a semicircle denotes? So half of 4 is 2 sticks, right? So semicircle can be used to denote 2 sticks. Am I right? Similarly, what can we represent with the quarter circle? So you know quarter of 4 is going to be 1. So 1 stick can be denoted with quarter of the symbol. And also the 3 quarter of the sign denotes 3 sticks. So in this way we can represent the multiples of 4 and as well as the other numbers as well. So now let's look at the method to represent this 
data in the picture graph. So first what do we have in here? Number 23. So you know 4 times 5 is 20. So we need to draw 5 circles first. So 4, 8, 4 times 3, 12, 4 times 4, 16 and 4 times 5, 20 has been denoted. Now remaining 3 sticks are there. So what can we show represent 3 sticks with? We can represent 3 sticks with the 3 quarter of the circle. So we need to use three quarter of this symbol to represent the number 23. Do you understand? And let's look at the next number. Next number is 12. So 12 is a multiple of 4. Am I right? So you can easily denote that, represent that with the circles only. So 4 times 3 is 12. Am I right? So we need to draw 3 circles. 4, 8 and then 12. The next one is 18. So this is also not a multiple of 4. So let's represent 16 first. 16 is a multiple of 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. So let's draw 4 circles first. 4, 8, 12. And then 60. So how much more do we need to represent 18? We need 2 more. So 2 is actually half of 4. So we need to draw a half circle, semicircle. Did you understand? Now the next one is 26. This is also not a multiple of 4. So let's represent 4 times 6, 24 first. So, 4 times 6, we need 6 circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 4 times 6 is 24. We need 2 more. So, 2 can be denoted with the semicircle. The last one is 16. It is a multiple of 4. So, 4 times 4 is 16. So, we need to draw 4 circles. So now do you understand children how to represent the data in a picture graph? So now you will be able to do all the exercises from your textbook. They have used different kinds of symbols to represent the picture graph, data in a picture graph. So if you have any doubts you can ask from the comment section. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.